In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five solid tips so that you can build better and faster Flutterflow apps. And I guarantee you by the end of the video, you're going to be using a couple of these tips, if not all of them, in one app or another. Now, this video is brought to you by Mastering Flutterflow, which is my comprehensive Flutterflow training. And so if you're looking to build no code apps, then you definitely need to check out Mastering Flutterflow, which is going to walk you step by step on building all kinds of Flutterflow apps without writing a single line of code. Plus, when you join the training, you're going to get access to our private community where you're going to get help and support when it comes to building no code apps. Now, as always, all the apps and all the resources that I demonstrate in today's video are going to be available from my Patreon page. And you can learn more about our amazing Patreon community using the link just below the video. Now, for the first tip, I want to show you a very, very common scenario. So let's say you're building an app and you have a couple of things going on. So I have a parameter here. I have a page var. I have a list and I'm looking to display some data from Firestore DB. And when I run this page, I get a red screen of death and it says here unexpected null value. And then I have a bunch of other text and it's not really clear at this point what exactly is causing this issue. Fortunately, it's relatively easy to figure out what is the culprit and fix the issue. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to open your JavaScript console right inside the browser. So I'm actually using Chrome, but the feature is pretty much the same regardless what kind of browser you're using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into help. And I'm going to type console, okay? And then I'm going to click on this developer JavaScript console. And I'm going to have this little area right here. Now, what I want to do is I want to scroll all the way up, all the way to the beginning. And right here, you're going to have some extra information in regard to the error, in regard to whatever is causing your app to misbehave like this. And so, as you can see, it says here, exception caught by widgets library. And it's selling you the error. So, it's selling you that page one widget is experiencing some kind of an issue now unfortunately beyond this page one widget in this case we're not getting any more information as to which widget is responsible for the problem sometimes you will actually be told you know exactly what is the widget that's giving you this issue but right now it's not exactly clear apart from this page one widget and we already know that page one widget is this page one here and so that is not news to us right now now the next thing that you need to do you need to go back to your app and you need to do the following and that's going to easily tell you which widget is responsible for making your app crash what you want to do is you want to select the widget you want to click here and where it says default variable value, you want to type error, press confirm. You want to do the same thing here. And there's no reason to do anything for the list view because if the list view was the issue, it would actually tell you in the JavaScript console that, that's it, that it had to do something with the list view, okay? So once you do that, what you want to do is you want to go back to your app and you want to do an instant reload, okay? And you want to wait for the app to load. And now, as you can see, the app loaded and we can see that this widget is displaying an error. This is not displaying an error. This one here is actually displaying the initialized field, but this one is displaying an error. And the reason it's displaying an error is because we did not give it an initial value. And so when it was time to display this widget, it crashed. But when we assigned a default value, that default value was being displayed instead. And so anytime you experience this red screen of death, just follow these steps and you will solve the problem in no time. Now for this next step, did you know that you can easily display HTML content with CSS styles inside of any widget? Well, that is exactly what you can do. So I have here another page and I have a custom widget that displays custom HTML. And so if I go to my custom widget section and I find this custom widget that I'm using, you can see that I'm displaying this HTML string right here and it's being formatted perfectly. And that is because I'm using this HTML 
package here that allows me to quickly and easily display any kind of HTML content regardless if it has CSS styles or not. And so if you Google for this package called Flutter widget from HTML, you're gonna see this search result. If you click here, you can see that you can easily render HTML in your Flutterflow widgets. And this is really, really powerful because this allows you to copy and mimic just about any style that you see on the web. And so if you're using the Chrome browser, you can download this page rib extension and you can copy and render just about any element that you see on the internet inside of your Flutterflow app. So let me show you how this works. So if I click on this extension right here and I click on select element, what I can do is I can select just about any element that I want to perhaps render inside of my Flutterflow app. Let's say I like the styling of this. All I need to do is click here and now I'm going to see the styles right here. So at this point, I can just copy this right here, go back to my Flutterflow app, replace what's inside here with the stuff that I copied, paste it here, and then click Save. And then I need to recompile it. I can just click on Compile. All right, so it finished compiling. I can go back to my UI and this widget will render automatically and this is the widget right here and as you can see it preserves all the styles and all the formatting of the original html element here okay so i copied this whole line and that is exactly what's being displayed here and so if i run the app this renders perfectly right here exactly how it was on this web page and what this means is that if you like how something appears in your browser you can easily copy that and put it inside of your flutterflow widget and display that pixel for pixel exactly how it appears in the original place where you saw it now this next tip was actually suggested by someone inside of our private community and this is actually a very very common scenario so here i have a page with a table and i'm displaying a list of restaurants so i have one column for the restaurant name and one column for the url so it's a very very common scenario if you want to display like a table of data and so i have this data right here in my cloud firestore collection this is my restaurants collection i have like three restaurants and i have some data for each restaurant address category name url etc etc and here i created a data table and i fed it with the restaurants and for this column i'm displaying the names and here i'm displaying the urls and if i run the app this is what it looks like so a simple table with the name and the urls now what a lot of people want to do is they want to have a url and they want to have this clickable meaning that they want to attach an action to this now this is actually not possible out of the box with flutterflow and the reason is because if you select this text field and what you need to do is you need to select an action and you can't attach this navigation because this is a page navigation. Another option is that you can type URL and you can click on launch URL. The problem is you can't attach a URL here dynamically, okay? It has to be a URL that you type. You can't load it from here. Well, the solution to this is you need to use custom action. And so if you type custom and you scroll down, you have a section where you can create a custom action. And I actually created a custom action right here called navigate URL. So if we select that, I can specify a URL right here and it's gonna redirect it there. So all I need to do is click here, go to restaurant, select the URL. And now I've just attached an action that allows me to dynamically specify a URL. So if we reload this app, that second column should be clickable with the URL for that specific restaurant. And so here's the page. And as you can see, this is now clickable and I can click it and it's going to redirect me to the specific website. Now, how exactly did I do it? Well, it's actually very, very simple. I created a custom action that has like two lines and it uses this URL launcher package that's actually built in with Flutterflow. So you do not need to add a separate dependency. All you need to do is define an argument that this custom action is going to accept. In this case, I have a URL, which is a string. And then I'm taking this URL, I am parsing it 
it, converting it, and then I'm executing this function right here, launch URL, and that's going to redirect the user to that specific URL. And so a really, really elegant solution to a very, very common scenario where instead of displaying just a random text, you actually want to display a dynamic action with a dynamic argument, you can do it using custom actions. Now, this next tip is probably one of my favorite features that Flutterflow has released recently, and it allows you to do some very, very interesting things. So here I have a page that displays a list, and let's say this list is going to be a list of incoming emails. So this is going to be a user's inbox. So right now it's displaying one email. We have a from column and we have a subject column. Okay. And so if I go into my data here, I have this one email here and I have body from subject to, and if we go into our app, it's just a simple data table with two columns. Now, what's cool about this specific feature is that you can do interesting things if the data here changes. And so if the user gets another email, you can actually notify the user and present some sort of an action that they may undertake. So if we go back to this data right here and let's say I create another similar document. So I'm going to say add a similar document and I change the subject to, Hey, you know, X2 or something like that. So right now we just have one email and if I click save and I go back to my app, it says here, new email and it redirected the user automatically to the detail page. That's going to display information about this brand new email that was just added, meaning that they just received this new email, we are able to take an instant action and redirect the user. Now, how exactly does this work? Well, if we go back to our app and we go to this page right here, I'm actually doing a couple of things. And so at the top level, I have an action here and this action I'm doing a query to get the number of emails. I'm doing a simple count query and I'm returning the number of emails here. And after that, I'm updating widget state with the number of emails that we got. Now, the next thing I'm doing is I'm loading up the emails for this main data table. But another thing that I'm doing here is if we go into actions, I'm also listening for emails that are being added. OK, so here I have on data change, which is Flutterflow's recently new feature that allows you to listen for updates on the data that you care about. In our instance, this is the emails from that email collection and the first thing that i'm doing is i'm checking is the number of emails more than the emails count meaning that the user got another email here if that's the case we're going to show a snack bar and we're going to say new email and we're going to wait a little bit so in this case two seconds and then we're going to navigate them to the email detail page and that way there's an immediate response from the app the minute they get an email we are redirecting them to the last email they received and so a really really nice flow that allows you to do some interesting reactive functionality in your app and as you know users love reactive features in the apps that they're using Last but not least, I want to talk about some functionality that I feel is highly, highly underrated because I know a lot of people are not using it, even though I'm sure it's going to make your lives a lot better. So right here on this page, I have a very, very simple UI component. OK, this is a basic dialog box and you can use it all throughout your app. You can use it as something that kind of slides up, maybe slides down, maybe a peers but this is the type of functionality that your users expect so rest assured this is going to be throughout your app if not all of your apps that you're building now i spent some time tinkering with the ui you know giving the buttons a certain length giving the bu buttons a certain color and right now i am very very happy with the ui and so the next thing that i want to do is i want to select a specific widget or a specific element that i feel i'm going to be reusing throughout my app or with other apps as well and i want to turn that specific widget into a template widget so all i need to do is right click on this button and what i want to do is i want to click on save as theme style widget so i'm going to click here and i'm going to call it okay button okay we're going to click on create style 
And I'm gonna do the same thing for this cancel button. I'm gonna select the button, right click, save as theme style widget, and we're gonna say cancel button, create style. Now, if you go back to the left hand pane and you click on theme settings right here and you scroll down to theme widgets, you're gonna see these two theme widgets that you've just created here, okay? And this is kind of your widget library, if you will. And so you can click on the widget and you can change it around, right? So you can maybe yeah, change the font size, maybe make it bigger. So 20 actually looks good. Maybe change the color, maybe make it red, but that's not gonna look good. So we're gonna change it back to white right here. So this looks really good. Maybe change the width, uh, change the opacity, you know, make it a little bit more see-through. And when you're done, you can click on save. And let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna change the font to 20. I think that looks really, really good and click save. And now if I go back to my UI designer and let's say I'm designing something here. So I'm going to add another row right here. And let's say inside this row, I want to add a button. I'm just going to add a button. And now I have a generic button. The beauty of saving these widgets as your template widgets is that you can click on this button right here click on theme style right here and then you can select one of your predefined widgets so i'm gonna say this is an okay button and voila i have a button that's gonna be the exact same design as my template widget and remember we changed the font we made it a little bit bigger so i can click here i can click here and i can select it right here and that's gonna load up the styles and i can do the same thing here and I can load up the styles as well. Now, obviously you can do this for just about any component. Now, let's say you wanna take this entire dialog box and you wanna turn it into a template widget. Well, all you need to do is find it. This is right here, right click, and then I wanna do save as a theme style widget. And I'm gonna say dialog box right here, create style. Then I can go back here. It's gonna be under layout elements because unlike buttons, that users interact with layout elements are responsible for laying out other elements and so you can click here and you can kind of work with it okay so right now it has a width of infinity it doesn't have a set height which means that it's going to take up the height of the elements that are placed inside of it and here you can mess around with opacity you can change the padding you can do a lot of customizations and then you can reuse these styles for pretty much all your other widgets and so let's say i come back here i go to my column and here i add a container okay so now i have another container i can click here and i have a dialog box okay and now I have a container that's gonna take the shape of this dialog box here. And now all I need to do is put stuff inside of it and it's gonna look exactly just like the container that we modeled this container on. So this right here is awesome functionality because it allows you to customize any of your components once and use it throughout your app, which is kind of what you wanna strive for because you don't wanna have all of these buttons to be different sizes, different styles, different colors, et cetera, et cetera. You want your UI to be consistent, very, very important. So that way, you do not confuse your users. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you're looking to leverage some of the tips that I mentioned here today, chances are you would want to view this app and or clone it so that you can get a head start on customizing the specific functionality that I talked about today for your specific use case. And you can do just that when you join our amazing Patreon community. And when you join our amazing Patreon community, you're not gonna get access to just this app. You're gonna get access to every single app that I built on this channel. They're all there. You can view and or clone every single app. Plus you're gonna get access to extra content such as Q and A's, live streams, behind the scenes content, as well as Patreon exclusive masterclass series where I do deep dives on specific topics that the community votes on. And beyond that, when you join our Patreon community, you're gonna be supporting this channel and supporting my work and that is highly highly appreciated so if all of that sounds like something you might be interested in then definitely check out our incredible growing patreon community and consider becoming a member you can learn more about it using the link in the description below
Now, if you guys are interested in more must-see Flutter Flow tips that I'm 100% sure you're going to be using in your next step, then you want to check out this video that's linked right there.